Hi folks, this is Oli at Visor Down bringing you our verdict of the new 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke R. Certainly one of the big launches of the year. We were in Portugal to put the new beast through its paces at the Portimao circuit and the surrounding roads. Is it still as sharp as ever? The Super Duke has long stood for naked bike performance and aggression, stretching back to the first 1290 Beast of 2014, all the way to 2005 when the original 990 Super Duke rampaged onto the scene with its front wheel firmly in the air. A string of updates has kept the KTM competitive since then, but with rivals including Aprilia's 200 V4 1100, joined by Ducati's new Street Fighter V4, and Kawasaki's ZH2 this year, the hyper-naked knife fight has never been crazier or harder fought. Sounds like the ideal timing for the launch of the revamped 1290 Super Duke R, nicknamed Beast 3.0 by KTM, and intended to improve the Austrian Challenger on both road and track. Riding it at the swooping Portimao circuit and the surrounding roads of Portugal's Algarve region should give it a good idea of how it stacks up. There's only one version of the 1290 Super Duke R, and it costs £15,699 in either orange or black. But as usual, things aren't quite as simple as that, because the price doesn't include the gearbox quick shifter, which comes in at £349.28, or optional track pack, £305.56. This allows you to disable the anti-wheelie and adjust traction control levels throughout nine levels. Both seem almost obligatory in this class, as shifter is standard fitment on the 790 Duke after all, and take the price to just over £16,350. Still, that's still less than the Tuono Factory and Street Fighter V4, but more than the base model Aprilia and other hyper-naked rivals. Nonetheless, you do get keyless ignition and cruise control as standard. The engine isn't the main story of this model update, but KTM have made plenty of changes. The intake system is revamped with a single intake at the centre of the distinctive headlights, instead of one on each side. This adds some ram air effects and feeds a bigger air box, which in turn supplies new top-mounted injectors. Many internal parts in the crankcases are lightened, saving almost a kilo in the engine alone. The new exhaust also saves a similar amount, despite having larger diameter pipes and an additional catalyster. Hiding much of it below the engine means the silencer looks respectably trim too. The max power output is increased by 3 brake horsepower to 177 brake horsepower at 9,500 RPM, but in many ways the Super Duke R's more important figures are its near unchanged torque peak of 140 Nm, and the fact that the DOHC 8 valve lump kicks out over 100 Nm from just 3,500 RPM. As before, it's a gloriously flexible power plant, whichever of the three engine modes you choose. A tweak of the throttle sends the bike leaping forward with a muted growl from the silencer, yet the response is as refined as it is strong, and even very low rev running is smooth and civilised. On near deserted Algarve roads, the Super Duke R is wonderfully exhilarating and effortlessly rapid. KTM's lead rider wasn't hanging about and I could tip the bike into blind turns in pursuit, knowing that even from 5000 RPM or below, it would rock it out again, responding immaculately to the throttle and revving smoothly and hard while I hung on tight and flicked through the revised gearbox with the aid of the flawless shifter. What it wouldn't have done without the optional track pack fitted was pull a wheelie. Thankfully the launch bikes were kitted out with that and a variety of other power parts including acro slip-on, silencers which costs just over a thousand pounds. That engine flexibility was also handy on the Portimao track, where the bike was happy to take most of the turns at gear higher than I might have expected and fight out of the turn one right-hander in fourth, where most bikes would require a downshift. It was seriously motoring just before that too, indicating 170 miles an hour in top, while I chinned the tank trying to prevent my head from being removed from my shoulders by the wind. Indeed, wind pressure might become an issue at times because the Super Duke R provides very little protection, even by naked bike standards. Some launch bikes were fitted with an accessory screen for the road ride, but even this barely covers the instrument panel. A gym membership and a heated vest might be useful extras for UK riders who don't stick to very short trips. The bike's revised styling is more sharply aggressive than before, but very recognisable. The riding position is slightly sportier, with the handlebar set lower and further forward, which was helpful on the track and also seemed a good compromise on the streets, still giving a comfortably upright position for lower speed riding. There's some adjustability in the handlebar and plenty of other neat touches. The riding position is fairly roomy and the footrests can be adjusted. You can even fine tune the gear lever throw and click reserve the shift pattern. 
Less helpful, the bigger airbox cuts fuel capacity from 18 to 16 litres, which should still be enough to get a range of over 100 miles, given that the KTM was averaging an easily bettered near 40 miles a gallon, despite plenty of throttle abuse. From the seat, the TFT screen is new and improved, part of an electronics package that includes revamped and more easily used switch gear, plus the latest generation Bosch traction control and cornering ABS. It all works seamlessly, although it's disappointing that, as before, you need the optional track pack to be able to disable the anti-wheelie, at least without turning off the traction control too. The Super Duke R chassis changes far more than a first glance at the retained layout of tubular steel frame and aluminum swing arm might suggest. That frame features larger diameter tubes and uses the engine as a stressed member for the first time, which results in a whopping 200% increase in torsional rigidity, along with a 2kg weight saving. A new rear subframe of cast aluminium and carbon fibre replaces the old steel tubes, saving another 1.5 kilograms. The engine is held higher in the frame, which KTM says aids handling and gives 5mm higher pivot for the single-sided swing arm, which is redesigned and 15% stiffer. Rear suspension action is also completely reworked, now incorporating a rising rate linkage below the WP shock. This allows a remote reservoir unit to have a longer action while reducing rear wheel travel from 156 to 140 millimeters. Up front, the 48 mm WP Apex Forks gives an unchanged 125 millimeters, while now allow a giant adjustment of preload as well as damping. Steering geometry has also been tweaked and wheelbase increased by 15 millimeters, but it's the rear end changes that make the most difference. The Super Duke R always handled fine on the road and it's now better still, feeling a little more sporty and a little more composed, and steering with impeccable accuracy even when the pilot is putting plenty of body weight through the bars. A couple of times when I hit a big bump at speed and felt a jolt through the seat, I wonder whether the outgoing model would have soaked it up slightly better, but I'm not sure about that and most of the time the rider quality was fine and the seat felt impressively comfortable. On track, the new Super Duke's R's advantage became very clear. The previous model worked okay, but was held back by all that rear suspension travel, tending to squat under power and feel a bit loose and wobbly, especially with a taller or a heavy rider on board. One lap of Portimao was all it took to confirm that this later Super Duke R has no such issues. Entering turns, and when braking with full force of Brembo's potent Stellemma calipers, this chassis felt subtly more controlled, aided by that stiffer frame, probably also by the revised geometry and the WP Forks revised cartridge design. And on corner exits, the KTM was transformed. It no longer sat down under acceleration, but stayed taut, holding its line much better, transmitting all that torque to its sticky 200 section Bridgestone S22 much more efficiently, and making the bike feel quicker and more enjoyable to ride. With its knife sharp styling and unashamedly exposed riding position, the 1290 Super Duke R has always been a hardcore hyper naked bruiser whose ultra torquey engine fully deserved that beast nickname. Until now though, the chassis couldn't quite keep up, especially on a racetrack where it was too soft and too vague. That changes now with the latest update, which is notably stiffer and better controlled, giving KTM's V-Twin a timely boost with which to take on an increasing number of feisty four-cylinder rivals. Whether it's the best of the hyper naked bunch remains to be seen though until we test everything else. What's for sure though is that the revitalized 1290 Super Duke R is bringing a seriously sharp knife to the fight.